This week, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Tropicana, performing at the Laugh Factory, two shows a night, all week, baby, March 16th through the 22nd. So grab your dice, grab your girl, grab your guy, grab your cash, come out, party, laugh, live, love, fuck, shit, do all the stuff that you do in Vegas that uh, that you wouldn't do normally without a bright uh, Denny's marquee above your face. Uh, Tropicana Laugh Factory, March 16th through the 22nd. Cannot wait. Uh, come out. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. And then next weekend, woo, I'm back in Texas, baby. Yeah, <laughs> Fucking bring some of that barbecue dipping sauce and put on your cowboy shoes. I'm going to be at uh, Hyenas Comedy Club in F- Fort Worth, Texas. We had a great time in Dallas. And now we're going to Fort Worth. It's not too far, but just far enough for you to come see me again and see a different show. So come out and see me, Hyenas Comedy Club, Fort Worth, Texas, March 28th through the 30th. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. April 15th, I'll be on Lights Out with David Spade. Uh, April oof, April 29th, I'm at the uh, Broadway Comedy Club in Walnut Creek, California. Um, and, uh, and a lot of other exciting tour dates, all at adamraycomedy.com. We're coming to Rochester. We're coming to fucking West Palm Beach, San Diego, uh, Chicago, uh, fucking Boston, fucking other places. So, uh, so get on the, uh, the horse and come out and see me live, baby. All right. Now that we got, uh, all that info out of the way, I think it's time for a podcast about last night. Brand new starting now. Simpsons predicted this like they predicted everything else. Do you remember that thing where, where in China where the guy coughed into a box and then it opened up? No. And it came back. I think this is a bad riddle. Look it up. You no, know, it is a bad riddle. You about the story about and the, the riddle is it. true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> coughed into a box and what came out? The future. <laughs> what? Bubble butt. Bubble, bubble, bubble butt. Bubble that's butt. what came out that's when you coughed into back. a box. The, the bubble butt. <laughs> bubble butt. God, that, we haven't seen that on the charts in years. <laughs> That sucks. Coronavirus came back just and it's just, just when bubble butt. They're like, hey, we. They're like, we're not happy about coronavirus, but but honestly, we're paid on the internet, which means we don't have to go to the bank. It does suck that people are dumb enough that are like, yeah, I don't even drink the beer now, and you're like, what? What? You know, looks like you had too much of it before. <laughs> there have got to be some competing uh, beverages that are real fired up though, right? That they don't have. You know, a virus in the name. Yeah. They're like, finally, AIDS beer. <laughs> finally. Do you think the people, the good people at Corona are HI like. HI vodka. Ooh. Ooh. You don't know you have it. And everyone's until, like, until it's, it's in you. It's, it's high vodka. Wait, what is the slogan? <laughs> you don't know it's, you don't know you have it until it's in you. And Gatorade's so pissed because they're kind of the same thing. Oh my God. That was one of my first jokes. About the, uh, I go, slogans are just a little too sexual, aren't they? Great setup. And then I go, Gatorade, is it People in like, you? How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> Mom, Remember this that? is a corporate <laughs> for all sport. <laughs> all sport. My dad worked in Northwestern. <laughs> and so they, they had a contract where they were like, guys, you know how Gatorade's working for everyone else? What if we went the opposite direction and just put in sugar water? And so we had cases of all sports. Because nobody wanted it. Yeah. The team is like, we're good with Corona. <laughs> the virus? No, the beer. Yeah, no, no, both. Jeez. We can't have like, all sport. Back to the future, table for one. All sport was like Biff. the crystal clear Pepsi of energy drinks. Yeah. Uh, not even energy drinks, just sugar. Electrolyte. Like, try- But the commercial, I would love to go back and see what that commercial, because, you know, the Gatorade commercials, big budgets, millions of dollars, truly trying to get you to think that you're not living properly without this beverage in your routine. All sport, I want to think, was just like a guy on a stoop in like Burbank. Waiting for his dad who never picked him up. Yeah, and his dad never comes, but then some guy goes, hey, I see you lonely. And he goes- It's just a giant bottle of All Sport. Hug me. (laughs) The weekend dad beverages. With a guy in the costume, like outside those Yeah, it's a pedophile. (laughs) I was going to say it's a guy that walks by and he goes, so this is an alt, because that's the commercial, but then alt, a guy walks by and he goes, hey- yeah, you be the kid. I'll be the guy. Ready? Oh, man. Hey, it sounds like from the way that you just sighed into that microphone that you're waiting for your father that's not here. I've been waiting a week. That's a long time. 
I got news for you. He ain't coming. That's the bad news. The good news is, and then he just pours an all sport on the kid's head. And he goes, you got grape. <laughs> He's just on there like flash dance. Yeah. Well, then there uh, was Powerade. Powerade made a, a, a healthy run at being a competitor. To it's Gatorade. still out there. It's still there. I enjoy Powerade still. I like the purple. I, like I don't, the, uh, don't tell me the drink, though. Like Gatorade, I like the story because it was the Gators at Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they were like, we just called it. Claude Shires is somehow involved. In he is. You know who Claude Shires is? No. He's, I think his uncle or his, his great- dad, I think. Or his wow. It's very, uh, uh, Something in his, in his created, immediate lineage. I think created the drink. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he's, who do you think's more rich? The heir to the Gatorade fortune or the heir to the- The Hot Pockets fortune. Okay. Not doing say- well. She is under indictment, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So really? she used to be College. rich, and then she had to pay for lawyers. College scandal. Yeah. She she got re- the Hot Pockets air got wrapped yeah. up in the Lori Laughlin thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it's the Lori. The Lori Laughlin. That's how it's going to be called. The Lori yeah. Laughlin in 20 years? Yeah. yeah. Oh, in, the, in history books? Oh, my God. You hear what happened to Adam Ray's kid? She got Laughlin. <laughs> <laughs> she went to Nevada and played the Edgewater Casino? <laughs> she wishes. <laughs> How was that? That's a really awful gig. Yeah. Uh, I went into the room. My dad lived in Laughlin for a little bit. I know it sounds like a Garth Brooks song. Edgewater Casino? <laughs> my dad lived in Laughlin for a little bit. Doom, doom, guys, hold on. I'm, I'm just going to let me tune up real quick. Doom, 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 doom. All right, go ahead. My dad lived in Laughlin for a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Played the Edgewater Casino. Didn't want to. Boom. Walked into my room. Saw a lady with a broom. And everything already smelled like pee. Oh, like pee. <laughs> oh Edgewater, I'll never come back. Edgewater. Edgewater. I saw someone smoking crack. Edgewater, there's no water nearby. Edgewater makes you cry. Sponsored by the Edgewater Casino. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. Wait, what? Why did they fund Who this own for song that? that tears down their business? Because you know what? They're truthful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They it's can't their lie. marketing ploy. It's like, don't believe us? Come check it out. <laughs> oh, you don't think we suck? Prove it. I'm like, there's no oh, cherries. Emo? <laughs> Come stay here. Yeah. You, you think we suck? Prove it. Yeah, we do. I know Tom has prove it. I know Tom Hanks did a commercial for the Edgewater uh, Casino. Oh uh, well, guys, hold on. Tom, didn't you stay? Now you're a big advocate of the Edgewater because I heard apparently during the filming of Philadelphia, it was the only hotel that was open. Because- well, I mean, well, the problem was we didn't film in Philadelphia. You didn't. Most people don't know that. No, well, a lot of people don't know that. They think that you filmed on a soundstage. But- no, we filmed in a casino because Denzel, Denzel Washington has a terrible, terrible gambling, gambling problem. Addiction. Yeah. Yeah. On oh, the on the set of Philadelphia for the craft services, what kind of sports drink did they have? Did they have Powerade, Gatorade, Full Blown Aid? Did they have any of those? They had Zima. Oh, <laughs> Zika! Sign Z- of the time. Zima virus. Catch it now, <laughs> <laughs> while it lasts, which is longer than you think. That's the Hangover. <laughs> it's two full splash movies. Do you know? Do you know why they got rid of Zima? I, Zima I, I could Z- not be more interested. They in couldn't the get rid of Zika, but Zima, the malt beverage, Zima's gone because it doesn't appear on Tell a breathalyzer in 1996. Yeah. <sighs> What's that? No, you, it doesn't <laughs> appear what on a breathalyzer. Really? They cracked the code. I yeah. drank it in Japan, and it's actually very tasty. I remember the first time I had one? Yeah. It was uh, it was delicious, but then tastes like Sprite. Yeah, yeah, I immediately got made fun of though by you know. Oh, fucking, that's a chick drink. And I was like, I know, I was just kidding. And I said, hey, put that to the side. Why would you drink fridge. chick Put drink my name though. on it. Huh? Yeah. Why do we have post-its for Adam? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sack lunch in an office. <laughs> Guys, who's Zima's in a paper bag? Read the post-it. It says Adam. Uh, did you have sack lunches in elementary school? Oh, I thought you were going to ask if we had sex in elementary school. Did you have sex? The answer is yes. Did you trade sex for a sack yeah. lunch? Did you have sex lunches? Did you buy <laughs> No, but what was in your sack lunch? Uh, this says a lot about you and your mom and, and, and how much money you had. Uh, mine, so a little. <laughs> if it was just an apple and you were bartering. Oh, or you, didn't realize I was with a rich man. Oh, yeah. You did had I, an apple? <laughs> well, tell me, millionaire. <laughs> Who's the guy that's never seen fruit? <laughs> yeah, he, he's a prospector. One day we'll have apples for all my kids when we dig for gold. But right now, didn't realize I was in the presence of a, of a, of a prince. <laughs> 
Cool, la di da. Realize that about last night was really about hey, you being a rich kid yeah. growing up. <laughs> I wish, man. What did you have in your bag? I was so envious of the kids that had like, you know, just not homemade sandwiches, but like Gelson store-bought, oh. pre-made the day of where it says like, must eat by today, Who must eat by your lunch. By fourth period. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it knows your class. It's yeah. like that specific. Who does this? I don't know, Dean. Dean, what'd you have for lunch? Uh I got sent with a couple of cigarette butts and uh, a, a a couple of uh, sunflower seed packets. Those are good. I wouldn't be mad about that. No ranch flavor. You could trade with the birds. <laughs> what did you guys get? <laughs> I got. You know, what my dad used to do is he would take a Ziploc bag, and he would put in. Um, uh, he would cut up pineapple, and put in the pineapple juice in the Ziploc bag, oh, yeah. and then put a straw in there. Baby, have my own Capri Sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My dad was the MacGyver of lunches. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that crazy? Your, your, your dad uh, does things a little differently. L he does. Um, you didn't know any... Did you not know that that wasn't done? I didn't know. So you were just like, yeah, I, I drink my beverages out of a plastic, out of a, out of a zip, zip. By box. the way, this is... I'm not kidding. This is first grade. First grade. That's a time when I think kids, they look... And they whisper maybe, but yep. they don't necessarily throw shade yet, right? Yeah. Just a lot of assessing. Everyone's just sitting back. So you probably got people like at lunch being like, it's a sandwich. I'm really good at space work. I was going to, that sandwich is huge. <laughs> <laughs> they just eat their way through it. <laughs> Tie that sandwich off for later, like a feed bag on a horse. <laughs> um, so PB and J's. What would happen? while you were drinking out of the Ziploc. Well, it looked like, I guess in retrospect, it, I looked like a um, a drunk because <laughs> uh, I would have this paper bag, but my, my dad always made, made us bring the reusable lunch bags. Good for him. Because, you know, earth. Save the earth, yeah. Yeah, and so I would be in there like a, like an old drunk drinking out of a Corona in a, in a paper bag. Fuck. Well, yeah. uh, what else did you have in there? I had a box of raisins. Cool. I had um, oh the sandwiches though. My mom bought the equivalent. Costco wasn't around, but like the thousand, like meat pack. Oh yeah, they didn't last. I mean, we there's only my my brother and I and my dad. It's like Sorry. come on, oh We're it's like so many sandwiches. Bologna, bologna. What is bologna made of? Pigs stuff, like the the leftover stuff that pigs are. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, it is. When they take away the pork chops, the bacon, the shoulder, the pork butt, it's like whatever's left. Hoof. Are you kidding me? A lot of hoof. Hoof, nose, face, brain, lips. Are you fucking... Tits. Hey. Bologna is just... Hor is hey, y'all, can I get tits. a pig tit sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what size Oscar do you want? Meyer. I'll take a D cup. That's Extra Larry. mayo. You got a sense of humor. I told him to be she is stand up. <laughs> what was that noise? I'll have a pig tit sandwich. Extra mayo. <laughs> what the f you know what that's called? I a suey. <laughs> Can I get a foot long suey? <laughs> <laughs> There's certain noises that you go through your whole life thinking you'll never hear. That was one of them. <laughs> I'm 37. I've never heard what the fuck that was. <laughs> like, we got that on tape, right? <laughs> wait, 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 one more time. Was? It's like you dropped a it's like you dropped a firecracker in the toilet. What is that? <laughs> Definitely in water at the end. Yeah, yeah. I'm just the that's the sound of something of mayo squirting onto pig tits. Definitely not what I heard. I thought you were milking pig tits. <laughs> well, it's a combination of both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you There's were, no wrong answer. I thought you were <laughs> No, there really is. I thought you were directing pig tits in the first ever baloney porn called Pigs in a Blanket. <laughs> By the way. And that was the noise she made when she didn't agree with the feedback. Well, Because she can't talk. So, hey, Deborah, I want this on this take. I want you to. Are you listening? Wee! Are you listening? And, <laughs> get your face out of the truffles. We'll get the craft oink, service later. Oink, oink, oink. I'm assistant Don't directing. Don't just say oink. Hey. Yeah. Stick to the script, please. <laughs> and then. Mr. Ray is an amazing bush, writer. We want to. Oh, there we go. Bush, bush, Give me the gold. Bush, Camera bush, two. Bush. <laughs> Are we getting this? Come on. <laughs> Don't say oink. Say boink. <laughs> that's what the tagline is. No, that's what she has tattooed on her. Uh, I don't know. I was about to say the tramp stamp. Do pigs have taint. <laughs> A book I'm trying to sell to kids across America. Do, do, do pigs, pigs have, have taints? taints? Everybody poops and do pigs have taints.
<laughs> man. And if they do, gobble, gobble. Well, well, don't, don't spoil it. <laughs> Spoil the majority. Back to pig you're, paint. You're the you're the morning host when yeah, I start to uh, improv it. Don't don't so, tell us what it's about. Yeah, so tell us what, what was the book you had to read over the weekend. The majority of the literature I read yeah. these days is about animals and what noises they make. Oh yeah, sure. because I've got a daughter and that's what I read there. And most kids' books are just about that. None of them cover whether or not the animals have taints. I and think I think should. that's the book I'm going to write. And that's how old's your daughter? She's almost two. Yeah, there is a book, but it's for three year olds. Okay, and uh, <laughs> you gotta you can't introduce them too early, you know. But by the way, is the is the uh, Pigs in a Blanket starring Porky and Miss Piggy? Oh my! And it's God. about Kermit walking in becomes a three way. <laughs> but he's not equipped because he doesn't have. Uh... No, he's got frog green, legs. He's but... a green frog with blue balls. <laughs> we found our tagline. <laughs> Wait, Sandy, how many? Uh... Do you do all the noises? Because this was one of the things I found oh, yeah. as a roadblock with my nieces where it was like doing certain. I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? How much does it cost to get pigs in a blanket on Redbox? Okay. I found this on the web for how much does it cost to get pigs in a blanket on Redbox? Check it out. What does it say? Prices are increasing. Uh, Redbox movie gift cards. What if it was just a fucking giant pig anus? <laughs> what if it just cut to the trailer and it was just like, wah, wah. he's like, get porked this summer. <laughs> Who's in it? Um, start. Yep, yep, yep. When he comes, he goes. <laughs> when Porky Pig comes, he goes. Yep, yep, yep. That's all, folks. <laughs> and you think he's done? <laughs> and then, and then Kermit just comes up and goes. <laughs> So filled with rage. Played by Seth Rogen. <laughs> he's like, hey, how many? Uh, Miss Piggy, I, uh, I got something green for you. It's not my dick, it's weed. And President Obama is the guy who was supposed to be running the pig stall that night, but got a phone call and had to leave and came back and saw the pigs were fucking. Uh, hello. Uh, is this uh, MCI? I thought you guys were out of business. Uh, no, I don't want to change my long distance service. I've got to go watch these pigs. Uh, hold on. Whoa, they're fucking. <laughs> this summer. This. <laughs> it's always in the summer. Oh, come on. There's no winter movies. There really isn't. And I wonder if that'll even be affected by the virus, the summer blockbuster. It definitely will. Will Smith is so pumped. James that he did Bond not... isn't coming out. It they're, moved. They put it Up back. The they postponed it because no, he is. <laughs> China closed down all their movie theaters. And Chinese market is the second biggest market. Yeah. Well, it's coming out in November now. Yeah. And that's when they think that it'll be, uh, the virus will be done. I don't, um, it sucks to not know because I feel like there's, uh, you know, like we were saying, like there's that first couple week period where you kind of laugh it off. You see a lot of late night jokes being made about it and then, uh, and you don't get personally affected or know anybody, right? Like, I think that's when it gets real for anybody. But now, with well, like, the way that the, the incubation with this is, or the way that it, it multiplies, is it doubles every day. And so, like in the beginning, it's one doubles to two, two to four, four to eight. But then you really see when it gets into the larger. I mean, it, it, then it just doubles so quickly. Yeah. And so they think that it's going to affect a shit ton. I think was the medical term. Well, pand <laughs> pandemic was used, and that's a scary word. And uh, you know what sucks is the movie Quarantine was re released in the theaters, but nobody saw it. Save it for the hold. Pod. Save it for the hold. Pod. hold. We're adding in laughter. Hold for plane. <laughs> hold for punchline. No, that was it. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of hold for punchline, uh, all three of us starring in the film The Bellman, which will hopefully, you know, guess what? Since we're going to a digital platform, we uh, we have no viruses stopping that baby from coming out. No. Is the premiere being postponed? I don't know. I don't think it's hit Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. I think everything that's hit Tucson, Arizona. Uh, HPV definitely has hit. Tucson. Well, that's not going anywhere. That's no, in no. Tucson for the rest of eternity. Yeah, but yeah. It's, I, where it, it's headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, HPV headquarters. Yeah, we're in Tucson. Yeah, I've got it. You want it? You guys open? Come to Sigma Always. <laughs> hey, guys. Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you're enjoying the episode. Man, it's good to be back. And you know what? The best part about being back is sharing the goodies with you, the fans. I love candles, okay? You know from listening to this podcast, we've always had candles living around the apartment and now my new place. 
And um, I'm tired of buying the bullshit candles from the store. I want some personal touch. I want something handmade. So that's why I found Hangover Candle Company. That's right. Homemade by a bartender in Fort Collins, Colorado. He's a big comedy fan, podcast fan. Reached out, said, I love the pod. Would love to some- send you some candles. I'm like, I'm not comfy giving you my address. He's like, come on, trust me. I was like, all right, let's roll the dice. Boom. Now I've got fucking 40 different flavors of Hangover Candle Company candles in my place. Um, they're cut, sanded, poured, packed, and shipped all by him. Um, and you can choose from over 200 different containers, okay, to build your candle in and over 40 different scents to create your own uh, smell. You can customize your own scents. Shit, man, they've got flavors like uh, fucking root beer, apple pie, cinnamon stick, coffee, fresh cut grass, uh, hazelnut, lavender, leather, maple syrup, peach, pine, sandalwood, spearmint, sea breeze, vanilla bean, watermelon. Go to Hangover Candle Co. Uh, on Etsy, okay? Go to Etsy, type in Hangover Candle Co. It'll pop up at the shop and then pick your candles, and then use the promo code ALN25 at checkout to get 25% off your first order. 25%. Hangover Candle Co. is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, But again, go to Etsy, type in Hangover Candle Co., find the candles and the smells you want, create your own, and then use ALN25 at checkout to get 25% off your first order. I love candles. They're great for any occasions, bar mitzvahs, circumcisions, uh, uh, fucking weddings, funerals, gender reveal parties, uh, divorce parties, uh, coming out parties, coming in parties, coming parties. These candles are the shit, and they're my fave, and I want you guys to have them. So type in Etsy. Dot com and then type in Hangover Candle Co. and uh, and pick your candles and use ALN25 at checkout for 25% off. All right? Start smelling better. Start looking better. Start feeling better, okay? Because everybody farts, and candles are a great way to get rid of that. And now back to the episode. You're going. I am. You. We are going. You mean Tom Leonard are going to go? Which I a- think was so crazy because, like, I think I, I, I love it that they were just like, who would, who would be f- fun to have at the premiere? Yeah. The three of us would just go fucking do it. Well, you're fucking fun any- anywhere, and so I you too. Swearing. I mean, come on, you and I have the most fun, and Tom's the best. Tom's the best. But I just watched these videos of John. I don't know if you saw on John Kite's uh, Instagram stories. JB Kite on Instagram. Jonathan Kite. Jonathan Kite. JB Kite on Twitter. Jonathan Kite. Jonathan. Crazy Kite. story. Who are about you? That in a second. <laughs> J- my name is JB Kite. Right. Um. No. No. Jonathan Kite. This guy on Twitter, real quick, had and I wrote my my. Uh, I wanted the name Jonathan Kite. And this guy had it. And then we, we, I think like my publicist reached out to him in a professional way to be like, hey, we'll definitely pay you or whatever. He wrote back this manifesto saying like, your people are trying to kill our, like trying to come in here, big Hollywood asshole types. And my, my publicist was like, no, read the email. Like, publicist, we, were, we get it. You have apples. Go on. Hold on. <laughs> I work there. We wanted it for the publicity firm. <laughs> Um, JB Kai publicity. So, and then anyway, he like, he, we finally got it, but then it was like a weird thing. Cause the guy started impersonating me on Twitter. No way. And then he started saying like, yeah, terrible things that I obviously didn't say. I said to them in the privacy of my own home, but it's like, what was that wire doing on? <laughs> That's a weird fear of like getting, uh, you know, popular in this business. People like you see the fake accounts on Instagram or, or even Twitter, but them like, Hey man, the same way that people don't fact check you know, articles or anything that's posted. I mean, you know, I remember seeing like this thing on the front of an Inquirer magazine uh, at a grocery store and it was like, you know, Oprah gives birth to, you know, 200 pound, you know, Fig Newton moon baby. I'm listening. And, and yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like 20% of me is like, mm. but then like 80% is like, well, maybe I should buy it and just at least see if she's okay. Like this- 80% of you are like, part of that's true. <laughs> I don't know what part. Oh, Oprah's not having a Fig Newton baby. <laughs> what am I, a reader? <laughs> um, but there is a a fear of like the people that want to take on like your essence and yeah. put out shit that's like so insane. And even if it's out there and they see your face attached or whatever, there's still a lot of dum dums that are just going to be like, dude, John Kite thinks uh, thinks that fucking targets the new Walmart. You know what? I do, and I don't know if you read that from one of my fake accounts <laughs> I that did. I also run. I did. I say inflammatory things and then see where people are like, oh, that's too much. They go, not me. Um, <laughs> Remember when Kevin Durant was uh, made a burner account oh, and was uh, trolling? <sighs> Kept it more under wraps. That's so he weird to me. It's <laughs> Devin Courant. I'm like, how do we not see that? <laughs> it's There's just a grape, a Courant. <laughs> Um, no, but you know what I said? I hope I for those problems, you know, because you'll hear like crazy. Sh- I mean, obviously, the three of us are doing quite well. Yeah. And it's like, we'll hear about this stuff. And I go, I always used to say, like, there were certain things where I know that I had made it. 
And I think because like, and, and I think that's one of them. I'm like, when people started doing that, you go yeah. like, yeah, you know, cause then we took care of it right away. And Twitter was like, oh good. Like it was great. But um, yeah, but Jonathan Kite now for everything. Um, you were just in Mammoth. Yeah. For a uh, film festival. Yeah. I hosted a lot of the events there. Yeah. That was so cool, man. You, uh, it's uh, an avenue I don't think I've seen, you know, doing stand up is, is one skill set, but hosting and then being funny while you're hosting, we all know is a different like oh, beast, especially in a setting where some of the setups lo didn't look like they were entirely conducive for you to do your thing, where it seemed like there was there were mics and whatnot, but you know, I think a lot of these events, I mean, shit, when I played my sister's uh, uh, 20th reunion, uh, I was like, yeah, it'll be fun and whatever. I know a lot of the kids will be there. And and, uh, and they were, you know, pumped about it because I'm their one tie to the business. But I get there and it was just like weird bar and none of them, they were like, you're going to do it in this, in front of this. Uh wait, 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 wait. You did stand up at your sister's 20th high school reunion? Yeah. When did that happen? Oh, this was uh, July. Oh, so was we're that all super duper awkward? Uh. It was awkward because it was one look. So she's what, a year, a, two years above me. If we were in high school at the same time, so I knew a lot of the people that were there. Grew up with them too. They had siblings that were, you know, uh, there that were friends of mine. Yeah. And uh, so it was cool to see a lot of them. This one kid named Brett von Hoffman comes up to me, who I hadn't seen in fucking years. His sister was in my grade, and he goes, "He directed the pig." Brett von Hoffman. <laughs> I literally was saying, "I go, I think I know him from Can't Hardly Wait." Well, uh, <laughs> he does have a tie to animals. He. <laughs> He comes up to me and goes, Adam Ray. Adam fucking oh, Ray. And man. I go, oh, this is not going to end well. Is that from a monologue book? <laughs> he goes, Where it's not connected to a play at all? Do you remember? Um, he goes, uh, I go, oh, no. He goes, when you came to my house and made me eat dog bones with you? And I go, oh. <laughs> whoa. I go, fucking no, dude. I go, good to see you, Brett. <laughs> You're like, when? He goes, last week. You're like, it was not me. Fake account. Oh my God! <laughs> I got him again. Oh, yeah, that, dude. I was gonna say those deep fakes are getting Whoa. real. Yeah, what? and I go, and then I go, I go, I go. Dude, <laughs> I, I, go dude, I go, dude. I'm sorry, I don't remember. And he goes, that shit was crazy. I go, crazy that I made you do it in your own house. I go, yeah, this was. You had home court advantage. You yeah, couldn't I didn't tell even me to have leave. a dog. <laughs> Comes into the shot while you're saying it. He's eating it again. You're like, oh, somebody goes now. I'm addicted. It. I have my own brand. I'm not a dog. Bone. I'm not a quitter. Changed my life. <laughs> I'm not a what? I'm not a quitter. <laughs> Nobody has to keep going. It was a goof, man. I thought you were a cat guy. Hey, hey. Von Hoffman's, you know what we do. Eat dog bones, apparently, when yeah. you shouldn't. No, we commit to the bit. Oh, well, we know I, what was in yeah. his sack line. <laughs> yeah. Just kibbles and bits. He goes, anybody want to trade? More for me. Server turf, you know, kibbles and brits. Kibbles and brisk. It's, it's brisk iced tea and brisket if you're Jewish. Uh, kibbles and brisk. Kibbles and brisk. <laughs> Circumcision skin. Kibbles and, yeah, kibbles and brisk. Now, Ooh, this is a little chewy. You win. Yeah. It, the bag is foreskin that it comes in. Oh, I need more room. Give me a second. It's like a bigger lunch bag. Growing my foreskin back. Oh. Said, yeah, said, that's the new that's 20 that's so millennial. Yeah, I'm yeah, growing yeah, my yeah, foreskin yeah. back is a great special title. I'm circumcised, but I identify as uncircumcised yeah I have, I have a mullet i have a cock mullet where it's <laughs> the skin's longer in the back you'll see my, yeah. my pubic Follow hair me is, on is Instagram. the rachel the yeah. rachel yeah, yeah. You, you yours is blown out yeah exactly you mean the, yeah. the you mean the pubic hair no the 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 skin yeah <laughs> <laughs> you you see you see sandy's foreskin blocked <laughs> seen it i did it <laughs> i'm not just a customer i'm the owner <laughs> oh, so you saw the infomercial we made. You here for it? Stop eating dog bones. <laughs> I'm a Von Hoffman. I'm a Von Hoffman. We do what we do. It's on our family crest. That doesn't make sense. Those were not around. No, so so the reunion was bad. <laughs> but but <laughs> I, moral of that story. <laughs> wait, wait. It was off to such a good start. <laughs> no, it was actually fun. But the reconnecting with these people. I was doing the show. It was in front of an area. They go, you're going to do it right there. And I look over and I see Wayne Pish you. <laughs> no, no, they, they, wait, no. <laughs> These are not real. <laughs> Dude. By the way, glasses pushing three bills. Wayne is the sweetest guy you'll ever meet. But what's but the his name? last name? <laughs> Pish you. What's his middle name? When, uh, Lil. What? Lil Pish you. <laughs> He's a SoundCloud rapper. 
<laughs> Little <laughs> piss you in the building. So he's he's up there doing the time capsule thing where he's like, oh, and he goes, so and it looks funny. like and Ashley Rogers said she was going to be a teacher, but you can barely hear it because it's so loud. I go, I'm not performing there. I go, we got to figure this out. So there was this long, deep hallway. And so I go, let's where the speakers were for the sound system. I go, why don't you just put me right in front of that? Even though there's no stage, we can put a bunch of chairs there. So it was fine. But there was uh, this kid that I played football with who uh, was two years older than me. And he was fucked up. And apparently he showed up there drunk. And everyone was having a good time. But respect, uh, you know, being respectful with their booze intake and trying to chum it up. And yeah. some people were getting a little fucked up, but but within reason. So he's hammered. So I'm on stage, whatever. And then as soon as I'm there, he just goes, he goes Adam Ray. He goes, we play football together. And I was like, Robbie. I go, Robbie. I'm going to say his last name. And I go, Robbie. Uh, oh, fuck it. Robbie Knowles. I go, uh, Robbie. I go, uh, I go, give it up for Robbie. This is uh, great to see you, man. It's been a minute. He goes, it's been a minute. It's been a long, it's been a long minute. And I was like, it's been a while, dude. And he goes, it's been, yeah. It has. like, this is a long minute. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get this guy down. And then he was just, uh, he kept chime, just kept chiming in. So now it's like, you know, you're trying to make jokes. You, a lot of people know you. So you're like trying, but you're also just trying to do your thing and not think of the fact that they're maybe assessing it from a place of like them just looking at you and then inserting their old memories and trying to be like, how does this add up? Like a lot of people were just yeah. <clears throat> kicking back and enjoying it, but he's very drunk. So now I'm like, well, now this is just a heckler. So I need to kind of contain this. And then at one point I, I started kind of coming down on him, asking him how long he's been drinking today, blah, 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 this and that, making some jokes, you know, uh, you, you know, you're going to get a, you know, whatever. The and theme then, of this reunion is intervention. <laughs> no, sit your ass down. And at one point I just go, I said something to the extent of that, that was half awkward, half laugh. And he just goes, I think that's enough, man. Whoa. And it got Whoa. real, real. And he was like, and it was just like, just, you can stop, just stop it. And I was like, all right, Robbie, everybody, I go, we'll see you at the bar. <laughs> and then you go, I can't believe I have forty five <clears throat> minutes to do left yeah. up here. <laughs> <laughs> I do an hour. Yeah, and then he slipped out. But have you guys played, uh, or would you? Would you go back? Here's the thing. I'm always curious about what shows would you? Because there was a part of me that was like, this is not gonna be. I knew it was gonna be a challenge, but that's part of the reason why I did it. Because I was like. I don't know, not that you want to do like a shitty bar show right now, but like something that that you're like, all right, there's reasons that I've built up to do it, making my sister, you know, she had a not good high school experience, missed the last two years. So it was like a cool thing for me to go there and be there with her and, and you know, be the entertainment and, you know, whatever and, and kick it with her. But are there certain things that you wouldn't do because of the obstacles like this uh, 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 film festival? So I did, I-, I did a celebrity bowling tournament. And so right away they said, it's going to be a pretty big thing, but it's in a bowling alley in Mammoth. I mean, it's like straight out of a movie from the 70s. It's so amazing. The alley was? and Absolutely. And um, the uh, But they go, there'll be celebrities. And I didn't know how much of it was going to be. They go, you're going to have a guy named Chris Reinecker, who's a really good friend of mine. And um, they're like, he's going to be up there. He hosted it the last two years. But the two of you. So I, I sort of dressed like Ron Burgundy. Like I had a white turtleneck and they gave us red coats. Nice. And I was like, let's make this <clears throat> like because I used to watch those old. I mean, now there's been like 100 jokes about them. But remember when ESPN started doing the other like not just two, but those other networks that they sort of made fun of in dodgeball and stuff like that. They showed those off kilter sports and they used to do bowling and bowling. There's not enough to say about these people because the the, the greater public don't know them. Mm-hmm. And so I go, you know what though? People do know these celebrities. I go, what if we treat it like that? And so he would go into there and the mics were like in the entire bowling alley. I mean, the place was literally fucking packed yeah. to the gills. And we had, they had real celebrities. So they had like Dennis Rodman and I posted a picture oh, today. Yeah, I got just... to hang with him and um, like Rebel Wilson and like Ben Lyons. Wow. And um, it was really cool, man. They had and Tony Hawk. And so we're up there and, and we're, and here's the thing though. What, I, I don't know if you experienced this. So I'm not a mean comic and I'm not like a roaster. Right. But but whenever you do like these type of corporate events, they're like, there are definitely lines you can't cross. Yep. And so when I introduced Dennis Rodman. Did they give you that precursor uh, where they're like, hey, oh, these yeah. are the things to not touch on. Oh, yeah. They're like, you have to make everybody look great. And I'm like, but I, I'm like, we're going to make jokes, though, about these people in a good way. Like I was like Dennis Rodman because I introduced him. because Michael Madsen was there. And so I was like, for Dennis Rodman, I go, guys, he needs no introduction. But that's what this whole part of this show is now. You know, f- like five time NBA world champ, arguably on one of the greatest teams, a personal hero of mine growing up in Chicago, the king of the rebounds and has some of the most interesting friends 
friends in the world, Mr. Dennis Rodman, because of the whole, you know, yeah. um, Punky Brewster. Yeah, the and um, yeah, I was hoping for like some sort of joke, like after Madonna, he got with. Well, I was going to say the only man to marry himself, which he did. And like, there's this thing. Talk we, about a rebound. Yeah. Oh, listen, man, that guy's lonely, but not. No, no. But he was such a nice guy about it. But they but they were so afraid that that everybody was going to like freak out. So the intros had to be squeaky clean. Ugh. And it's like, what do you want us to and do? And then people are judging. The, it's not like you can get up there and be like, so they told me to tone it down. Oh, so, you dude. know, I'm funnier than this. So I started making up judge. ads for everything because we had all these sponsors. And I started just making up. I was like, brought to you buy this you know ever do this da, 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 and like that became oh, and then we're like we're going back to the action and trying to make it seem like like a a, a hockey game or oh something. man and it was thank bowling. god you found a loophole dude I'm telling what kind you. of commercial did you do uh, and would you do some uh, impressions so uh, well i did it so we had to host the award show the last night and um right before we were going on there we stopped into a, a convenience store same guy chris reinecker and i and i go let's like so he wore a white sweater and i wore this like greenish kind of sweater vest and i go let's look dressy but not tuxedo and swear to god we go into this like this convenience store we got um uh, surgical masks that matched our shirts so we started off by saying welcome to potentially the last mammoth film festival <laughs> and then we were like sort of making but coronavirus hadn't hit that hard in america yeah. so we were able to sort of go from that and then at the end of the whole thing because we had to do like 10 minutes because that's how it was it was such a weird it looked like an airport lounge where we were performing people were on couches and shit it wasn't like an award show yeah and some people had to stand in the back so it was like it looked like cheap seats, but everybody was equal, wow. and it was kind of a weird situation. So what we did was so we did like about ten minutes of intro, and then we go, um, "Oh my god, I forgot to pay my meter," and then I leave, and then he goes, "You know, we got some guys that couldn't be here tonight," and then he pulls out his phone, and I did like Tom Hanks, Ryan Reynolds, Amazing. and somebody else, and then I oh and Obama, and then he goes, "Wait a minute, I have other voicemails that are in my junk folder," and then I did Trump, and then I did Cosby from prison but talking about how he just needed a new a fake passport and clean urine and then he was just like what why do i have that anyway let's get to the award show so it was like because i think not that people were expecting it but we didn't know how to get out of it and like we didn't get the award cards till literally um the show was starting they didn't have anything set up and the mics were going in and out no. the entire time because they were wireless oh. and everyone's phones were throwing off. i swear it was so we kept it together because we were like, listen, we're making the best. And we're, we kept making jokes yeah, about shit. Yeah, yeah. But oh my God. There's also so many. And people are hammered, by the way. It's the end of a, of a, of a festival week. Oh, God, dude. There's shit this faced is... on a mountain. Oh. I said, we need to leave or we're going to turn into a live. And I'm eating that guy first. <laughs> yeah. You know? He's not even paying attention. No, sir. He's dead. Sir, I'm, yeah. he's, I got a fork in him. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, who, who are you guys eating? I go, look down. Um, oh, got your, got, pig, you're picking pig a blanket. <laughs> Picked in sandwich. <laughs> Could you, uh, is there ever a time when you, now, how did you get this gig? Like, did somebody come Friends to you? Friends of mine are just, they they started the the festival. My buddies, Atomic and uh, and my buddy Tanner, and they this was the third year in a row that they did it. That's and cool. I haven't been able to go. And so they originally hired me, just like, they were like, can you come out and, you know, host this one thing that I didn't even mention that was like on the first night. And then when I think that they thought, oh, this might be a good thing if you host sort of everything yeah, yeah, with yeah. this other guy. Yeah, it's way cooler. Yeah. And, and it made like the trip. I mean, I mean, I, I had a great time anyway, yeah. but that was so much fun oh, good. because all Chris and I did. So I enjoy doing like weird stuff like that because it, it forces me to write bits. Like I don't want to go up there. I love doing stand up just like you two do. Yeah. But to go into that environment and have to write bits about what's happening. And so we wrote like a full stand up. Yeah, you bit. need to have those muscles exercised every now and then. Yeah. <clears throat> just to uh, again. And that's why I say you know, taking on a gig like that or the reunion, you know, like shows that you go might have an initial like roadblock for, but then uh, you're like, I can probably get something out of this. I'll get better. Sorry, slime. Uh, get better if uh, I wish I brought something Oleg. I'm like, I also have things I played. Bring it. Put made, it up. Made it into toys. It's just a, a doll I made of my own hair. Well, the Kermit's just Nobody a, a piggy bank. I, I was like, Jesus Christ, you played this guy too? I almost got Kermit Muppy Babies, but the fucking guy who um, it was between me and the guy who created who who got the rights to the show. Oh. And um I, I know this from two inside sources and uh he told me way after the fact, but it was still I knew I was close, but I didn't know how that close. It's one of those things where you're like, I didn't want to know that. Oh yeah, because I didn't get close I think I do a lot of them and I didn't get close on any of them. 
Well, they used a lot of the um, the original guys. Yeah, yeah, and then, that's uh, it, yeah. And then Eric Bowser, who just you know does everything, crushes. Dude, it, who's dude, it he's Nepotism, playing nanny, right? He's playing nanny. I thought Paulie was playing nanny. I was gonna play nanny. Oh, in the Muppet yeah. Baby. Yeah, bro. Right. Let me like, hear. Like Fozzy, stop playing with your hairy balls. <laughs> I don't think that's one of the lines, oh. Polly. Guys, I thought we changed that. Polly, do you have the corona? <laughs> the coronavirus. <laughs> Three sneezes. If he's one more, that means you're gay. Uh oh. <laughs> God bless Let me you, touch your hairy balls. <laughs> he came right back for that yeah. without missing a beat. It is weird how certain noises I'll hear where I'll go, like I'm now trying to hone in on like, what's the sound of the virus? What's the sound of a man? <laughs> Choking on some phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> on a Delta flight. But like I'll hear a certain sneeze or a fart. I'll be like that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it makes me go, that was... That's the virus sneeze or that's the virus cough because it sounds like a little too guttural. But but thankfully Trump has it all under control. Oh yeah, yeah. Honey. Some of these he inspires things, confidence. Some of the I just watched this interview uh, last night where he was just like, my dad was a uh, or no, my uncle was a what did he say? It was a my uncle John Trump, which is like the worst name ever. And he's like John Trump was a uh, was a doctor or a scientist. It can't sound more fake than that. Yeah, and he was just like, he knew a lot. He goes, so that's where I think I get my knack he goes, no, he goes, he goes, yeah. he goes, I should have been a doctor. Yeah, yeah. I should have been a doctor. I might have been. I know so much about medicine. Yeah, yeah. I've got I a, know it all. I got a hunch on all this I stuff. I got a hunch. My brother, John Trump. <laughs> the most made up John and ever. Don. Johnald. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Donald Trump is my brother. Is my brother. Oh, God. We're related. If he wins again, we're all gonna die. Well, <laughs> we might all die before he, he has a chance. I right. hope we. Yeah, I hope. I hope that we we don't die before we get to vote. Me too. You know that'd be great. Wait, can I ask you something? Yeah, please. You. What were you asking about my Instagram before? You were like. <clears throat> You saw something on my Instagram, and then you asked me. I think it was it, JB Kite, right? Yeah, JB. J, that's one of my fake accounts. Okay. If you like what it says, it's me. If you don't, it's Kevin Durant. <laughs> I think it was uh, leading into the mammoth. Oh, yeah, yeah. But no, this is actually what I saw. Um, so uh, you went on Kazam. Oh, Beat Shazam. Yes, Beat Shazam. I didn't go. Cause what did I say? I, w I went to yeah, I went. You went to go hang out with Shaquille O'Neal as a genie <laughs> to is, beat Kazam. <laughs> I beat him. I beat all the Kazams. By the way, that is a great reality show. Shag dresses a genie, and you have to out genie him. I'm gonna beat beat Kazam. I beat Kazam. We have reality shows for everything. You don't think there's aspiring genies out no, there? That's a game show called Beat Kazam. Beat Kazam. Well, you have to be, just hit a free throw before Shaq does. <laughs> <laughs> Short game show. <clears throat> Wait, but. Yoink. What uh, so Jamie Foxx host beat Shazam, which yeah. is the um, the app uh, that you hold up uh, to hear a song and then it tells yeah it's you what like it is. name it's like it's genius <clears throat> name it's, that tune it's like name that tune which everyone loves. Why were you there? I ran into him voting, which is this is true. We were so you know like, Jamie Foxx. Tell people. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you've yeah, been on so, the pod a billion times. By the way, thanks for coming on on the new setup. This is dude, great. this is cool. Right? I'm, by the way. Congratulations, yeah. as I was going to leave it toward the end. Yeah. Uh, but congratulations. This is an incredible setup. It's an upgrade. It looks beautiful. Yeah. It's so nice in here, yeah. and you deserve it. Thanks, man. And I know that this is a, a solo, I mean, with Buddy's adventure. Yep. Well, Brad's under your chair, actually, if you just look. Not today. He, he Well, I'm giving birth to him. <laughs> I'm keeping him warm under this. Did he have a little baby? Yeah, I just saw her today. Tiny Williams. Whoa. Uh, Elway? I mean, just, yeah. Just so cute. I saw on your Insta. Full head of hair, too. Like, I I didn't know that uh, all... Did Shiloh come out with a, a ton of... She came out with hair, but as her head grew and her hair didn't... It fell it out. It stopped looking like she had a full head of yeah, hair. Yeah, it looks like peach fuzz now. Yeah. My my nephew, uh, Zachy, he, um, his brother, Theo, look, he looked like he was wearing a toupee. Like his whole childhood, people Baby are like... toupees. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite sketches on SNL of all time. <laughs> Is that a real sketch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Baby Merkins? Well, no, he he didn't have that. He was shorn. What about cock mullets? <laughs> what about baby Brazilian? <laughs> From the producers of Baby Beluga. <laughs> baby Brazilian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, <laughs> Rafi has really gone off the rails. 
That's, that's the name called. of the album. Going off the rails. <laughs> it's just him doing a bunch of coke off a of clown's tush because he doesn't want to say butt, but the whole album is so filthy He's anyway. He's just doing it off of a, um, a balloon animal. <laughs> He's like, ooh. Ooh. A balloon cock. Yeah, but is that that's a giraffe? No, it's not. Why, Raffy? Why do you sound like Bozo the Clown? Oh, I thought it was the clown giving him coke. <laughs> <laughs> Baby coke. But also, I Tidden thought that, in diapers. I thought that was Raffy because who knows what Raffy sounds like? Oh yeah, what does Raffy sound like? He sounds a little bit like this. Oh, that's Bob chill, Ross, bro. Yeah. Let's ask Instagram Live. Does anyone know what Raffy sounds like? What are they saying, Nate? Let's get to our reporter in the field. Nate, what are they saying? Let me pull up on YouTube real quick. What Bob Ross? <clears throat> well, we know what Bob Ross. Oh, I know yeah. what Raffy's singing voice sounds like. I don't know what he sounds like just speaking. I'm going to type in Raffy interview. Can you do a singing voice of his? Baby beluga in the deep blue sea. You swim so wild and you swim so free. Heaven above and sea below. You're a little white whale on the go. Baby beluga, baby beluga, is your mother home? Is the water warm for you Wait a minute. to is your play mother home? in? <laughs> Wait, yeah. What was that? What happened to singing about down by the bay where the watermelons grow? Uh, down to my, what is it? Down to my... Bay. Down, down to your home. Oh. I hope your mom's not home. Because <laughs> they are all go. I'm not a stranger. I know her she's from work. Home, I'll pretend to be your dad's friend, Bill. My name is Uncle Terry. Wow, he I'm also, sure that song was always like, <laughs> My name is Uncle Ted. Let's get in your bed. Down, down by, by the bay. bay. Down by the wait, wait, whoa. I never listened to these lyrics before. Well, let's be honest. Those lyrics, they, they, then it was like, Have you ever seen a bat? You ever seen a bat? You know, sucking on some fat down by the bay. Like, all the, there was a bunch of those things. Just like, dragging him into the water. Yeah, let's pull him up real quick. Down. By the way, I typed in Raffy interview, which I'll come back to. And uh, what popped up? The first thing it said, Rafi talked. It was like it, in quotes. It said, "Our children face a real fear of climate change." Rafi is taking on the topics uh, of 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 current events. All right, here we go. <clears throat> well, it's almost nearing that time in the show, folks. I told you that. I that's kind of like what I did. This. Sounds like Paul Simon, a little bit. This is thirty years ago, though. Climate change. I don't think anybody will know it. Of course. That was a great impression, Sandy. Thank you. Down by. The this is my life listening to songs like this now what i'm looking for are the things where he goes have you ever done a dance mom's advice did you ever see a goose kissing a moose down by the bay the fuck where do you I mean, live yeah Raph? i've seen that yeah you want to talk about go on <laughs> bestiality is cool <laughs> why that was the alt title for this song you ever seen a ram fucking a <laughs> fucking a ham <laughs> boy improv stuff a whale with a polka yeah, dot the tail down by the tail that's herpes shop I go to. <laughs> those are herp that's some whale herps like beluga HPV <laughs> here we go this has got to be the good one this is the third one so we've amped up a lot of animals are we staying on the animal paths oh yeah did you ever see a fly wearing a tie down by the bay did yeah, you ever Goldman. see a spider drinking uh, apple cider down by the bay? Did you ever see a teacher kissing a creature down by the bay? <laughs> Whoa. By the bay. <laughs> is that by a, the way, did you see that... how he lost the whole audience on that one? <laughs> <laughs> the kids were like, if this see was a spider a... drinking some cider in London, right? Because that's where you get it. You get fucked up at the pub. I didn't say that, but they were all thinking that. Yeah, and then he's like, I you agree. ever see a teacher kissing a creature like... Was that the custodian? Like what? A- <laughs> One, the teacher from Florida who said the student was like, I have. And they're like, we got her. It was a sting operation. The student and the teacher are sitting yeah. next to each other. And you just cut to them and they're like, they're like, does anyone know you think? Raffy's singing about us? Are we getting called out by Raffy? They're like, why are you t- saying this out loud? We could talk about this at home. Well, All the kissing stuff too. I would like to hear just a full on topical twist uh, from uh, from Raffy with like, you know, like if he came out with Harvey Weinstein, it's 23 years sentenced uh, song. Well, he was supposed to be at Stagecoach, but they got rescheduled. So Harvey was no rap. Oh. <laughs> Harvey was on the main stage. Yeah, he was headlining the last night. <laughs> he was gonna. Yeah, 
Could you imagine uh, if he was just there, if if he was at, just at Coachella on stage for people to throw shit at him, like he was like in the lock stock, holog- <laughs> like in, like in the dark ages? I've never been to Coachella. Me either. Is it is it a blast? Uh, define blast. By blast, you mean getting hit in the face with dust? It is a blast of dust. It is. It is. I said it, it reminded me of like if Mad Max was a festival. Yeah. Because Burning Man. It's sort of a community, right? Whereas this, there are bands. There are there, there is scheduled things. A little more chaotic, though. It, huh? it is a little chaotic because the bands that everybody wants to see, like people sort of sleep in all day. Obviously, there are people that go to all the bands at some point. But like the big ones at night, like when I was there, Lana Del Rey was there. I think Kid Cudi was there and maybe MGMT. Wow. So it was, it was, it was pretty big. And like there were a lot of people that we like trying to get to the stage and it was a little it was a little chaotic yeah uh we brushed over this and i want to get back before we wrap this up yeah uh, the shazam oh so I, jamie you I, know him from jamie fox yeah yeah uh for, so i we we worked together a billion years ago and uh he he loves you he thinks he's you're the insane. best i love him so much and we bumped into each other voting and and he was like hey can you want to come by beat shazam and just hang out. I'm like, yeah, of course. And so we hung out, and I know a lot of people in his his crew and everything, and his um uh his people, just like the people he works with, and he they're so nice. And and then he pulled me out on stage because you know there's so much you know for a TV show there's a lot of audience warm up and there's a lot of downtime. And his buddy Speedy does the audience warm up, and then on the downtime Thank his job by the way. Oh, dude, yeah. and Speedy is amazing at is it. Yeah. Same guy. We had a guy Roger who did Two Broke Girls, mm. just an incredible like a juggernaut yeah. of a guy right and um so but you know jamie has a piano out there and he's trying to keep people entertained i mean i think in this day where everybody's like seeing celebrities there's a lot of air quotes i'm doing right now he's an academy award winner he is a grammy winner he is a guy who is one of the most recognizable entertainers <clears throat> in the world yeah and he's still going strong yeah. you know so and it's cool because his daughter co-hosts the show with him corinne she's oh, the dj bad. And so, you know, he sings, he like improv songs with his buddy who's on the piano. And it's like, damn, this fucking Grammy winner is making up songs for you guys yeah. right now. So when he called me out, he just started asking me about, he was like, what would Donald Trump say? And then uh, we we improv for like two minutes, three minutes. And then he was so nice. And he said this like really kind thing about me at the end. And, yeah, it was amazing. And, it, and then, how you're like the next up. He just knows he can spot talent. Said Jim Carrey was... The yeah. guy that he saw and he could see it in him, he sees it in John. Yeah, he's he like, was cool. He's like, he's like, John or JB Kite, one of you guys is going to make it. And Durant's like, yes. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And um, and then I didn't know somebody filmed it. That yeah. was the craziest thing. Oh, okay. It was on some oh, yeah. iPhone. So like we were just, you know, BSing. And obviously he said it was a, such a kind thing. But like mm. I, you know, in the moment when you're sort of hearing it or if it's like a surreal thing, like I still sort of get caught up in that because for me, like we were just having fun and yeah. I was listening to you him. You were thinking about getting somebody to get your phone and yeah, tape it. And yeah, it wasn't. It, yeah, and it was somebody else's. And so I and I didn't see it till the next day when I was like, oh shit, well, did you tape the whole, and I watched the whole thing back and the first thing I thought of was like, I hope I didn't make like a stupid face when yeah. he was saying those nice things about me. And um, it was so kind of him and actually, um, this is a world premiere announcement right now. So I, he and I are on a, a new sitcom together. Call. I just got cast. It's called um, Dad, uh, Stop Embarrassing Me. And it's me and him and George Wallace. No way. I swear to you. Are you serious? That's yeah. amazing. I haven't told. This is the, the this is it. Guys. Yeah. It's a bunch of people. You're live. It's a bunch of people, and it's um, it's it's crazy. It's pretty cool. Is there a part for Danny DeVito? <laughs> yeah, he's in it. Uh, then, but, but I, I asked because I needed you to mention me with those other names. And by the way, you for his brother also Manny DeVito. You're gonna, short for Manuel, <laughs> the Hispanic Danny DeVito. Yeah, he, Hispanic C, DeVito. C. C. Hispanic <laughs> DeVito. Well, uh, I I I I'm a big fan of churros, and uh, I, I, you know I don't eat Taco Bell. I'm a Del Taco guy. Were you trying to pitch Nanny DeVito with you and Fran well, Drescher? Yeah, it, housekeepers. It, it's, it's me and Fran. And uh, we're, we're, we're taking care of a bunch of four-year-olds. You understand? Four-year-olds? F- four-year-olds. Oh. I, you understand? Four-year-olds. You know what I thought you were going to say for Nanny DeVito? That it was, your, it was Danny DeVito's Mrs. Doubtfire. Like, <laughs> like, like, toodaloo. Toodaloo. Yeah, toodaloo. Yeah. Toodaloo. And then I don't know who, uh, who Charlie Day plays in that, but. Uh, I don't know either. Hey, what's up? 
what's up, dude? You play, uh, you play, uh, the, 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 I'll play uh, anything, man. I'll play anything, dude. What's Charlie, that? Charlie, listen, you, you're playing my son, the, the, and you don't know that it's me, but you know that it's me because you feel it in your heart. You for, understand? For Rick, I feel you, dude. I feel you, dude. Charlie, you, you, you gotta help me play this up. Yeah, man. I, I'm the, uh, I'm the, uh, uh the uh, Harv, or no. <laughs> the Harvey Weinstein, no, the uh, Worst game Harvey Firestein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, I, right when it happened, I go, I, I had this joke on stage about like how many weird calls did Harvey Firestein get the next day? His phone had not rang in a long yeah. time, <laughs> and it was like every call the next day was like, "Hello, what are you talking about? No, I didn't touch women. Was well, any men coming forward? Then it ain't fucking me. Who's the number?" <laughs> Uh yeah, that was incredible. Well, dude, wait. So when do, can you know when it's gonna? We don't come? know. Uh, you just we, got the the news that you're the, get, yeah. you're your cast. Yeah, that's fucking yeah, dude. Cool man. And Jamie's acting in it. Yeah. And Wallace. Yeah. George Wallace is a fucking gangster dude, well, and yeah. that guy should be on TV. Yeah, he's so. That's funny. incredible, dude. I mean, he's a legend. <sighs> um, it's crazy, right? That's unbelievable. But but also, you know, not surprised. Like, yeah. You should be like, thanks. Man. That all makes sense. It's great. Like, I'm super excited. And also, like, excited. seeing him talk about you in that way, I was like, oh, yeah. So, you know, and you guys, I know you were close for his sketch show or something back in the day. No, I got it. You got it. And then you guys did it. We did one season, but it, I, you know, a sketch show is, as we've all been a part of them, obviously. Like, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, no, I, I'm here. I, I, I was saying Sandy and I. Were you oh, in one yeah, too? Yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, it's You were in it's, Mad TV. CW. You were you said you were in Mad Magazine. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was on the I was on the reboot of all that. Dude, I, oh, what a humble brag. Yeah, what, no, I, I, thing, I, I'm yeah. trying to make shitty that you and I are yeah. both like a little harder <laughs> yeah. right now. Oh, so you know Kel. We oh, get it. Yeah, we I did some it. background work. Uh you know what, but I said I called you when you got Mad TV. And yeah. I was like, dude. I, obviously no one more deserving uh because sandy and i weren't available and um <laughs> no no but like i was so happy for you and obviously you did it with piat who we yep. both love and is yep. a dear friend but we both had a lot a lot of friends on the show yeah and those things are fucking hard yeah like harder than and there's a way that we that's why i give everybody who's ever on one of those shows not that you and i are critical anyway because we've obviously loved it and known those people on snl and shit but it's like those are shows are impossible. Yeah. They're so hard to do. So we did the show and then it just. And he loved you from that and yeah. has been tracking you probably. Yeah. We, yeah. And I, also out of sight, out of mind, dude, having that little experience with him. Like, I mean, you know, it's also like, it's why you have to, uh, I mean, I don't know if he sees you on Instagram or, or what, or out, out of the clubs, but like just, you know, controlling what you can control and like staying active so that like, because again, like people think you and then don't think you, but if you're out doing stuff and they drive by and see your name on a marquee or, or, um, pop into the club and, you know, Sandy's got his own show every Wednesday, which tonight, watch me chill. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. every Wednesday. It's once a month. Once where, a month. Where is it at? At the improv lab. Oh, dude. Congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. You got to do it sometime. I would yeah. love oh, to. You gotta, it's yeah. unbelievable. Me? I'd love to get you both together on that. Stage. I have so much fun when we always do the 88 together. Yeah. Like, yeah. With shout out to our Avery's dear friend on, Avery. The best. Yeah, Avery's Watch on, Me Chill is a show chill. like, I mean, they're truly, it's, uh, there's popsicles, there's massages, there's, uh, I mean. It's weird. In a nutshell, what, is, what, what? It's just basically like a show if it were to take place in my parents' basement. Yeah. I love that. Like just, I want always... the crowd to feel like they're hanging out with the people on stage. That I love that. I love that aspect of um of a uh, of uh that seventy show where yeah. they're all just downstairs smoking uh -huh. and it, it felt intimate. That's cool because I think that uh, that we're sort of losing that at stand up that it doesn't feel as intimate. Right. I'll tell you too what... many too many walls are going up because too many people are getting big. Well, also I think that like they're that it's such a business more than it ever has been since like the eighties yeah. or, you know, early nineties. And so the opportunity, like obviously, you know, when we do those rooms, they're all packed because people want to see comedy and obviously like the ticket prices help keep the lights on there, yeah. but there's something really special about a super intimate setting like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's an amazing show. Once a month improv lab. Um, well, that's so cool, dude. You have to come back when it comes out and, uh, and plug it again or any, love anytime, but I would like to close out today's show, uh, with something we did, uh, on the old ALN and we haven't done on the new one yet, uh, Ooh. which is prank call a Thai restaurant. Oh my God. So, um, you know, you do 
the best impressions of all time. I'm very partial to you, Jeff Bridges. Oh, we'll hang back. Uh, would you mind calling right now? <laughs> to, uh, to Taking my time, man. Who am I calling? Hold it up to the uh, up to the mic. You want me to Or what, Vince? Who do you think? Obama? You can go. Seth? Who is this? Yeah, who is what? Just a Thai restaurant. Help me help you. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, how are you, sweetheart? You having a good day right now? Can I ask you something? I'm fantastic. I'm driving. I'm kind of stuck on the 405 right now, but I'm trying to keep myself away from this coronavirus. You know what I'm talking about? There hasn't been any breakouts in the area. So I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm thinking my lucky stars. You know what I'm talking about? I'm praying to the sweet Lord above. I'm talking about God in the sky. You know what I'm talking about? I got to ask you something, sweeter. Do you have, do you have the, uh, what kind of, do you, do you have the uh, uh, pad tie with coronavirus? No. I mean, I'm asking because I'm, I'm looking at the CDC's website right now and I'm just kind of making sure I'm just kind of like taking myself out of the equation right now because I'm in my car. I'm in my bubble. What kind of a like what kind of pad thai do you have? A thai chicken, a thai shrimp, beef or pork or tofu or a thai vegetable. Are they locally sourced? Where do we get these kind of things? I'm just wondering because there's been a lot of like weird things with like the kind of the place like where they're coming. In. You know what I'm saying? Have your friend. Hold on one second. My buddy Jeff gonna order. Hold, hold, sorry, sorry. I'm I'm at work right now. I mean, where I'm in the car with my buddy. I gotta put him right on. Hold on one second. Okay. Hey, how are you there, sweetheart? Sorry, I was. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. My friend Vince is a little drunk right now. I don't know why he's driving. Let me ask you something. If I if we ordered one thing right now, what should we order? Up to you. No, I, I know, but I've never been there before. I. Uh, oh. I never, I've yeah. never been inside, man. Anything. You, you never tried try food. Let, let's get pad thai. <laughs> ah, the the pad rice. thai. How big? How many does that serve? <laughs> uh, one one day should be five for one people. One for one. Big party. What? Yeah. I'm, well, we got a big party. I'm gonna be buying for a work thing here. Five hundred people. It's like it's probably gonna be like. I mean, I'm talking about a lot of people. Do you guys do catering? <laughs> Catering size as well, like big tray, ninety dollars to serve for ten people. Ten people. I'm I'm talking about bargaining. We, we got a that's a bargain, you know. But I'm wondering, can we get it down? I only need to serve nine, and they're all Jews. Uh, I have no idea. Well, they're well, they're small and they're Jewish, so no seafood, uh, no seafood. I can't do this shrimp. <laughs> what are Jews like? <laughs> What's the best food for a Jewish function? Well, let me ask you something. This is in a synagogue, so there it's for it's for a bar mitzvah. Are you? I'm sorry, we're cutting out. I think we're on the four or five. Can you still hear me? <laughs> What's the best food for Jews? Yes. Oh, sorry about that. I got, I got this AT and T man. It's no good. Uh, what? Oh, but, no, no, no. What's oh, the best food for what's the best? Can I, I just got one more question because we're gonna. I think we're gonna come in there right now. We we're serving Jewish people. What's the? I mean, what's the best food for Jews? What well, feed the Jew? What? <laughs> what's the best food for Jews? Wait, what's the? What what's the best food for Jews? If you keep yelling, we don't understand you because you yelling us. Oh, sorry about that. Food for Jews. What's the best food for Jews? <laughs> You won't serve the Jews? Wait a minute, you're not going to serve these people? <laughs> the Israelites. I would love to serve you, but we, we don't understand you clearly from this number. Food Can for you the Jews. The What's the best food? Wait, sorry. Thank you. Wait, what about the food for the, the best food for Jewish people? Well, that solves it. Get the loop on the menu online, please, and tell us which one you like. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Do you have root beer? Do wait, do you have root okay. beer? Do you you have root... call me back when you know what you like. Okay. Okay. Do you have root beer? Okay, have a nice day. Bye bye. Wow. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> You're amazing, dude. You're my hero. Yeah, Jeff didn't let Vince get back on the phone. <laughs> I was a little concerned. Oh about my that god, idea. dude! I don't know how your brain moves that fast with Vince. It's like, 
That's crazy. You get into the mindset. Yeah, yeah dude. I you know. get lost. That's the only way I can do it, though, because I don't know how you are for impressions. And I, you know, but like. Well, that I, fast. I mean, I don't. And nobody that fast. That's that. That's like the only one I feel like that is <clears throat> somebody that talks that fast. That is that articulate. That is that like. He's going somewhere. Yeah. And you're yeah, building. Yeah, it. And yeah. Like even when you're like up in the sky. God, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Like. Yeah. <clears throat> so good, dude. Wow. We haven't done one of those in a long time. I know. Time. Save that number. We're calling back every time I'm here. <laughs> I want to be like, listen, I'm coming to town. Uh, you're in town for a little bit? Uh, yeah, okay. I am. So shows, where you'll post on Instagram, Twitter when you go do shows, right? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, congrats on the gig. That's Thank fucking you, unbelievable. And Kites of the Round Table, you and My your- podcast, yeah. my cousin, who's a musician, and uh, we're up once a week, and that's at Kites of the Round Table. Uh, well, it's, at, it's on iTunes, and it's on Spotify and everything in SoundCloud. And do you have an NBA pick for the uh, finals this year? Yeah, coronavirus. Here's the thing. Good night, everybody. 